Okay, so let me introduce Saber Rasmajui, uh, founding member of Lutra Consulting, and his talk on uh, the new EDR OGC standard. Excellent. Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, thanks for coming to my presentation. Mm, as uh, Stefan has mentioned, I'm from Lutra Consulting. We are uh, one of the QGIS developers. Also, we do support migration and uh, maintenance for QGIS and open source. In addition, we have got a mobile app platform based on QGIS for data collection. And today, I'm going to talk a bit about EDR, how it works, and uh, client implementation of it in QGIS in addition to some extra features we have added um, to better visualize meteorological data. Uh, when you deal with a uh, uh, large data set like climate data, it's very difficult to um, download the specific part and interact with the bits that you want. Uh, in addition to that, if you add the complexity around the sampling of data when you download it, uh, it's a very uh, challenging topic and with the cloud optimized format, it doesn't fully uh, address all those things. So with environmental data retrieval standard from OGC, they try to address this issue by introducing collections and then within the collections you have uh, different query types, spatial, temporal, and then you can uh, again um, uh, clip the data based on um, model numbers or some other parameters and download exactly what you need. So let's say you have a climate model, a global climate model for whole world, and you want to see the forecast for your city and town to download terabyte of data. By the time you finish downloading, probably the forecast is not valid and you are already a couple of days late. But with this kind of um, uh, standard, you can easily target the bit you need and download that. Um, the EDR is very generic. It can handle, as I said, uh, climate data or elevation data, vector, raster, uh, and any type of data. It's, it's extremely generic topic. Uh, you can have different types of queries, uh, point, area, mm, mm, and then uh, trajectory and corridor. Trajectory can be, uh, let's say, uh, a GPX point along a line. In addition, you can have uh, time as well. Let's say you have a flight path, and for each elevation, you have got a time stamp as well. And then you want to uh, clip the data based on that trajectory, and corridor is basically trajectory plus a buffer. So it's... a uh, 4D, and when you get into the uh, type of data you can handle, it becomes a bit mind-blowing. Uh, the type of uh, response you get from server, generally it's either raw data, like NetCDF or GRIB, uh, or um, any shapefile, usually GeoJSON or um, GeoTIFF, or it can be coverage JSON, which you wrap everything there and you can deliver it with the uh, layer symbology. And uh, another way is to have it as a cloud optimized. So you have uh, cloud, cloud optimized GeoTIFF or X arrays for NetCDF. Mm, so this um, uh, standard is quite new. It's been uh, under development in uh, OGC, and there are some server implementations of it, uh, but uh, QGIS is uh, pretty much one of the first clients to implement the, um, this standard for 
reading and parsing data. Uh, the whole project was funded by MetaOffice in the UK, and when we were approached, we had uh, two uh, different ideas of how to add it, either as a core feature, similar to other OGC standard like WMTMS or OGC um, uh, feature, what is it? And uh, other providers you see in your browser panel, or uh, we could do it as a plugin, which is uh, a bit um, give gave us more flexibility, and uh, also the standard is not quite finalized, so it helped us to um, update it as the standard evolves. Um, the response you get from server, you can drown yourself with uh, windows and sub-windows and menus and options. For example, in this one, uh, you have got the server and then the um, uh, collection. So the collection can be, uh, in this case, is uh, um, some NetCDF data, different... Uh, what is this one? Global data at uh, standard pressure level. So it's a cube data. You have got different data at different levels. It can be vector data or um, uh, raster data. And then the type of query, uh, cube data or area or trajectory or corridor. Then you have got uh, levels. So if you have a cube data, mm, two and a half the model data, you can have at what pressure levels you want to download the data. Mm, uh, and then model runs, so it's the option suddenly becomes uh, endless. Um, but with uh, lots of help with uh, from uh, MetaOffice, who have been also pioneer in implementing this uh, uh, standard, we managed to come up with a good interface and from there you can build your query one by one so essentially you just need to create a https query send it to the uh, server and then from server you get a response and this response can be net cdf uh, a raw data format or coverage json uh, to download and view in your um, um, qgis instance uh, in addition, we had some ways of handling the cache data. So if you run a query, let's say you want to run the forecast for the next two days. If you run it for today, it gets invalid tomorrow because you have new forecast data. So we built uh, the query in a way that you can just update the dates. So every day you go and just change the dates but the location and the spatial extent, etc., will remain the same. Um, and once you have done that, you download the data, in this case, uh, coverage JSON with the style, and you can just see the data directly in your um, QGIS. Um, all the queries will be logged, so essentially you can see, uh, does it have a pointer? All right, so the upper part is the request. So from collection onward, all this is what uh, you build through that uh, window. And then uh, you, uh, once you send it uh, to the server, you get this response and it, it checks if it's not cached. Mm, it will upload the, uh, download the data and uh, you will be able to see it in QGIS. I can run a quick demo, uh, so you get an, a better... Okay, so here I have uh, um, the server set up and I run a new query from here. Uh, you can see the data set that server uh, advertises, global population, 
And uh, in my case, I want an area. You can have it as a radius. So radius will be, uh, I put a point here. And uh, radius of uh, five kilometers. Mm, sorry. And then uh, the re output format, you might have multiple uh, EPSGs, different coordinate system. You can have it as different output here. I have it as coverage JSON. And uh, for this one, the query is quite straightforward. And once you run the query, you usually get an error because probably this, yeah. Uh, let's do let's do an area. Uh, run query, and then it downloads the data, styles it, and uh, you can see the styling coming directly from the server. So it's uh, not only a GeoTIFF, but also. Mm, the styling of the data. That's a very simple one, but you can run into really complicated queries. Uh, let's uh, run a forecast for uh, um, uh, yeah, that's the mm, area. We can set the area. Uh, and then format net CDF uh, parameters. These are uh, air temperature, for example. Mm, uh, and then uh, this one doesn't have the date. No. And then run. So you get the air temperature. From here, uh, I think this is a static data. Uh, let me run another one with um, uh, temporal. Uh, this one, uh, area. Uh, here, uh, net CDF air pressure level, you can see multiple um, uh, collection items you can download. I stick with air temperature and then here you can select a temporal range from July to for six hours. You can have intervals as well. So these are the pressure levels. Uh, oh. and then uh, run query. Uh, probably I overloaded it again. It's a test server, so. Anyway, I'll show you some data I downloaded later. And uh, the queries can be saved here. You can rerun them and change the date. Uh, as I said, it caches the data. And you will be able to, if you repeat the same query and the data is quite large, see exactly the same data set without do downloading it. Uh, and in addition to the Plugin, we developed a couple of features inside QGIS, which benefits uh, everyone, and that's uh, elevation controller, where similar to temporal controller, you can filter the data based on elevation. Let's say you have a point cloud data or raster elevation, and you want to see a specific range, 
you can use this new tool in QGIS. Uh, so this one, I show you an example here. Uh, view data filtering, and if you go to temporal con controller, you will, uh, oh, sorry, view temporal controller, and uh, there is now in the QGIS 3.38 onwards, you will see elevation controller. And there is a mm, vertical column here. It's a bit faded, but you can see. So with this one, you can move up and down the vertical controller, and you will be able to see the data at uh, different elevation. So for example, this is the wind data I have for um, different levels at different uh, pressure levels. And if I move the vertical controller, you can see uh, it changes. And the good thing about this, it also works with temporal controllers as well. So you can move both in vertical dimension and the time dimension. Uh, and uh, one more feature we have added uh, was the wind barbs. That's a uh, uh, way mm, meteorologists uh, style the wind direction based on the size and the, uh, based on the velocity. They can style it with this uh, funny shape. It's uh, standard. And uh, if you are in North Hemisphere, it faces one direction, South, a different direction. So uh, it's uh, something actually Stephanus did. And in QGIS 3.38, if you deal with velocities as a mesh, you should be able to style it like this. Uh, and my last slide is just a big thank you to MetaOffice, who have sp sponsored both the plugin and all this uh, vertical controller and uh, wind speed for barbs. There are several organizations uh, who implement EDR. Uh, I know Canada, Weather Office, Finland. And uh, you should be able to hook up QGIS and download your weather data directly from those um, uh, servers. Cool. Thank you, Saber. We have some time for questions. Yeah. Just, just really a follow-on where to get that data from or find those server connections. So I assume MetOffice have this available, do they? Um, or is it a licensed thing they provide? Or? The one I have been using is uh, like a test server, but usually you should, uh, they will advertise it what, uh, it's like a WMTS or other servers they have on their website, they might publish it or to their partners that we are now delivering data through this server. Okay, I just wonder if you had any examples that we could play around with uh, of, of this these EDR servers that we can connect to. I don't know if you had one in specific we could use as an example just to... Sorry, I didn't catch the question. Is it, do you have an example of an EDR server that we can Yeah, use? yeah, the one I've been using, uh, MetaOffice Lab EDR. If you Google MetaOffice Lab and EDR, you should be able to find one. All right, that's great, thank you. Yeah. I think Finnish, Ireland, and Canada, they also have it as well. If you go to EGC EDR implementation, they should have some server example as well. Any other questions? Thank you for the nice presentation. Um, I haven't worked with EDR formats before, but, but I have briefly worked with stack data. Uh, so um, for those that do not know, stack stands for spatial temporal asset catalogs. And um, from the query that I saw, it, it really reminds me of, of stack endpoints. 
Yeah. So do both data formats kind of complement each other, or one is this substitute for for another? Maybe. Mm. Uh, as far as I know, am I being recorded? As far as I know, Stack is not uh, an OGC standard yet. So EDR is there approved? I think they have got OGC F, F API or something feature. So they have uh, different stack is uh, coming up, but uh, yeah, I some politics probably around it, but technically it's the same thing: collection, collection ID, and it follows the same logic. Yeah, actually, Stephanus is working on uh, stack implementation for QGIS. So there is a pull request in QGIS. If uh, you have a look, you will see the um, stack in integration with QGIS as well. There is a QGIS enhancement proposal as well. Any other questions? Cool. No more questions. Good. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Saber, for the talk. No problem. Here's a small gift from the organizers. Thank you.